Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna help you pass a network plus. So if you've been looking at networking certifications, the network plus has probably come up in a bunch of different conversations. So in this video right here, I'm gonna go through some questions. We're gonna figure out the answers to help you better prepare for the network plus. Let's get straight into it. Mikey is the head network analyst for Zanny Freight Company. A few new clients have a unique request regarding security. The clients would like to prevent any and all authorized people from connecting to the network via Ethernet. What security measure can the network analyst implement at layer two? Port security, captive hub, WPA2, ACLs. So port security ensures that physical ports are secure. So people won't be able to just plug things into those ports. So it uses MAC addresses to make sure that if something is plugged into that port that doesn't have the right MAC address, that it gets denied, it gets no connectivity. Port security is a layer two traffic control feature and enables an administrator to configure individual switch ports to allow only a specified number of source MAC addresses to the port. Its primary use is to deter the addition by users of dumb switches to illegally extend the reach of the network. Basically, it allows you a fail safe to ensure that nobody can plug in things they're not supposed to. Ron is currently working on a point-to-point -point fiber setup that may take a week to complete. He is in downtown Chicago, which is a remote site for the main site located in rural parts of Chicago. For some reason, he cannot connect to the main site. Status lights for send and receive levels are within a suitable range. SFPs were double-checked and are all working. What tool can Leon use to find the locale of the fault. DSU, MDR, OTDR, Toner Probe. The optical time domain reflectometer is not a device that allows you to travel into the future. It's actually a device that actually checks the integrity of fiber cables. So it actually takes a virtual image of the cable just to make sure there's not any breaks, not any crazy stuff going on, and that the cable can actually have data put through it, and then it's gonna go to the destination it needs to go to. So it's a fiber optic instrument used to characterize, troubleshoot, and maintain optical telecommunications networks. The testing is actually performed by transmitting and analyzing pulse laser lights traveling through an optical fiber. The measurement is said to be unidirectional as the light is an insert at an extremity of a fiber optic cable link. Using information obtained from the light signature reflected or scattered back to the point of origin, the OTDR acts as an optical radar system, providing the user with detailed information on the location and overall condition of splices, connections, defects, and other features of interest. Blank defined, instead of assuming everything behind the corporate firewall is safe, the blank model assumes there's a breach and verifies each request as though it originates from an open network. Zero Trust, UITT, MITM, ITRS. So zero trust literally doesn't trust anybody. Nobody it doesn't trust anything. So it pretty much treats everything that's even behind the firewall as if it's somebody they don't know, right? For example, let's say that you go to your mama house, right? And you go outside the refrigerator and she slaps the sh out of you, right? That would be like zero trust. So even though your mama knows you, she gonna act like she don't, right? So zero trust is a way to really secure and harden your network just to make sure that things are going the way they need to. You came into work this morning to discover a problem with a DHCP server. It seems the DHCP server is not properly assigning IP addresses. Anytime a new device is added to the network, the new device is not getting an IP address assigned automatically. 
of the following, what may be the problem? A PIPA rerouting, DHCP scope exhaustion, network cable distortion, DNS server poisoning. So a lot of times you'll have a range, right? So you'll have a scope. So you have a scope of IP addresses that you can use. If that scope is not enough, you will have exhaustion, meaning that you've used all the available IP addresses that you have for that range and for your network. So you want to make sure that when you're doing IP address and when you set up a network that you actually have enough IP addresses to cover the entire amount of devices that's going to be on your network and you actually want to leave some IP addresses reserved and left over just for expansion, right? Because more cell phones might come, more laptops might come, more printers may come and they're all going to need an IP address. Hey man, stop moving. I should have tied you up better. It's super important to make sure that the range is accurate, right? Because you don't want to have what happened in this scenario. You don't want to actually run out of IP addresses to give to devices. So like I said, you want to make sure that you have not only enough IP addresses for right now, but for the future as well. So scalability. Scalability is super important because it means that you can actually be cool right now and when you scale, AKA grow, you actually have enough bandwidth, enough IP addresses to cover those new employees that's gonna come with those new devices. You are a network analyst for Master IT. You notice that several devices on the network have been assigned an IP address. The IP addresses were not assigned by the DHCP server on the network. After much investigation, it seems the IP addresses are coming from a server that you are unaware of. What would this be defined as? A DNS retraction, server reversion, rogue DHCP, SNMP reroute. So a rogue DHCP server is a server that is not authorized to give IP addresses to anybody on the network. Now sometimes they can be malicious, other times they can just be inconvenient. So rogue, meaning that it's then done its own thing. Instead of it being authorized by you, the IT professional, it is actually rogue, right? It doesn't belong there and it's doing whatever it wants to do. Now it may be giving out IP addresses or something else that can be a rogue device is when somebody brings a home router from the house or from somewhere else actually plugs it into the network and it's not supposed to be there. So rogue is the optimal word. So a rogue DHCP server is a DHCP server on a network which is not under the admin control of the network staff. It's a device such as a modem or a router connected to the network by a user who may be either unaware of the consequences of their actions or may be knowingly using it for attacks such as a MITM or a man in the middle. Some computer viruses or malicious software have been found to be set up by rogue DHCP servers, especially for those classified in the networking category. So as clients connect to the network, both the rogue and the actual verified authorized DHCP server will offer them a IP address as well as a default gateway. If the device decides to take the rogue DHCP servers IP address and gateway, then that device can be controlled by the DHCP server and be sent malicious stuff and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you have security in place to where you can see when rogue devices are on your network. Hey gang, if this video helped you, make sure that you watch my last video, which can help you not only get into tech, but level up in tech. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and head over to itmagicky.com where you can get certified in 30 days. Other than that, I'll see you in class.